My name is Kirsten Tynan, and I'm with the National Office of the Fully Informed Jury Association, headquartered in Helena, Montana. I wish you all today a very happy, safe, and productive Jury Rights Day 2013. I was up late last night and jotted down a few thoughts I didn't want to forget, so I hope you won't mind that I will be referring a little bit to my notes today. And one thing I haven't noted, but which I am hopeful that I will remember when I get to the end of my spiel, is that I have some giveaways today, one of which will be here on YouTube. I hope also to get around to our forum on our website, fija.org, and our Twitter account, and our Facebook account to do some more giveaways throughout the day. So. I invite you to stick around for that. Today, activists across the country celebrate the 343rd anniversary of the acquittal of Quaker William Penn, whose jurors recognized that he had technically violated the law by publicly preaching a religion not approved by the government, but who refused to convict him in spite of that. They maintained their conscientious acquittals, even when ordered by a judge to deliver a guilty verdict, and even when imprisoned and denied food and water to coerce them into submission to the will of the state. This case firmly established protection for the jury and the right of the juror to refuse to enforce unjust or unjustly applied law, a right of conscience we still have today. While jurors may and indeed should refuse to convict peaceful people under unjust laws, most judges today will explicitly misinform them telling them that they must convict if they believe beyond a reasonable doubt that a harmless person being harassed by the state has technically violated a law. In order for jurors to feel confident enough to exercise their juror veto power and stick to their not guilty vote under pressure during deliberations, they must understand their right to conscientiously acquit without fear of punishment before they ever get inside the courthouse. And this is why Jury Rights Day and the Fully Informed Jury Association exist today. FIJA was organized in 1989 to restore common knowledge in our culture of our heritage of jury nullification, the right of the juror to judge the law as well as the facts in every case at hand. FIJA declared September 5, 1991, the very first Jury Rights Day, and activists across the country took to public sidewalks to hand out Fiji's educational literature. This year, I invite you to join us for Fiji's 22nd annual Jury Rights Day celebration by doing three things. First, let us celebrate the many modern conscientious jury victories we are seeing as together we reintroduce into our communities knowledge of our right of conscientious acquittal when a just verdict requires it. Several names come immediately to mind. Touré Cornell in Montana, Doug Darrell in New Hampshire, Vernon Hirschberger in Wisconsin, Alvin Schlangen in Minnesota, Jeff Olson in San Diego, California, Tim O'Shea also in San Diego, California, Ed N.J. Weedman Fortune in New Jersey, Ed Fallon in Iowa, Steve Lederman in Los Angeles, California, Valentino Hicks of Yakima, Washington, Jonathan Ryan, a Florida resident acquitted in New York City, and many others. If these names don't sound familiar to you, perhaps you might consider that jury nullification is much more common than many people believe. Second, let us take a moment to reflect on the damage done to so many individuals who have been convicted and punished unjustly, often in barbaric and cruel prisons unfit for human life. People like Tim De Christopher, who was convicted of participating in a government auction that was later itself declared illegal. Paula Huff, who was convicted and now awaits sentencing for medical marijuana she was legally licensed by the state to grow and use to treat her arthritis. Gary Harrington, who spent 30 days in jail for harvesting rainwater on his own property in Oregon. Medical marijuana providers Chris Williams, Aaron Sandusky, and Jason Washington, and everyone else maliciously trapped by the Department of Justice's backpedaling from the infamous Ogden memo and its subsequent mass raids of dispensaries across the country who were trying to operate legally within the laws of their states. 
and too many thousands more victims already convicted or currently being bullied into plea bargains with trumped up charges stacked by prosecutors to intimidate them, and that very small percentage of accused who are about to take their chances exercising their right to trial by jury. These people aren't just prison statistics. They are parents of children who are now needlessly growing up in broken homes without their parents' love, guidance, and physical, mental, and spiritual nourishment. They are significant others whose partners are denied support and nurturing from the most precious loved ones in their lives. They are adult children who will be unable to support and provide for their parents as they grow older with love, respect, and dignity. They are our neighbors whose reputations have been unjustly tarnished, our friends whose relationships have been irreversibly damaged, and our colleagues kidnapped from being productive members of society and left to rot behind bars, often as de facto slave labor for private corporations, with taxpayers forced to foot the bill for this abomination. And above all, they are human beings, individuals denied their most basic human rights by abusive police, corrupt judges, vicious prosecutors, and uninformed jurors spoon-fed just the right filtered information to lead them to the conclusion government agents want them to rubber stamp. These human beings are the reason Fiji's work is critical and why so many of us are out and about this week educating our communities about jurors' rights and responsibilities. We understand that there are real lives at stake. Third and most importantly, use Fiji's message to create three newly informed jurors today. Those of you on our mailing list have already gotten this invitation in the last couple of weeks, and I want to extend it even further. Each juror should know that the first defendant in any case brought by the state is the law itself. If the law is guilty, either inherently or is applied in the case at hand, if the law would harm someone who has harmed nobody, if it were enforced in the case at hand, each juror has the right and the responsibility to protect human rights, by setting aside that law and delivering a just verdict. And each juror should understand that they may be the only fully informed juror standing between the accused and grave injustice. They must be prepared to exercise juror veto when justice requires it, and to stick by that even in the face of significant pressure from other jurors during deliberations. There is no requirement that a jury agree on a guilty or not guilty verdict. A hung jury is just fine, and it is much better for the accused than caving into pressure to deliver a guilty verdict. The power of a single juror is significant. In every federal jury trial and jury trials in all but two states, a juror can save a person's reputation, property, livelihood, relationships, freedom, and even a life with that single vote. And those two states are a testament to the power of one standing up against the state. The state of Oregon fears the power of a single juror so much that it has decided that two jurors are required for acquittal, and Louisiana is even more fearful of the power of independent-minded individuals requiring three votes for acquittal. Think about that for one moment. These state governments are so concerned about their inability to convince just 12 people out of millions, handpicked on a playing field drastically tilted in favor of the state, that they have lowered their own burdens to convincing just 11 or 10 individuals to convict. That says something huge about the protective role of jurors. Please reach out to three people today to discuss with them what they need to know if they should ever serve on a jury. Don't just drop a slogan on your Facebook page or hashtag a quick tweet and call it good. Engage three people, have a meaningful exchange, encourage them to seek out more information for themselves. You can refer them to our website, fija.org for more information, or suggest they call us at 1-800-TEL-JURY where they can leave their name and address and receive in the mail a free jury power information kit. 
We at Fiji National thank all who are spreading Fiji's message on Jury Rights Day and every other day of the year. We are a volunteer-driven organization and would not be able to do this without you. Your efforts in your own communities are what ultimately determine how likely you are personally, your loved ones, and everyone else in your community to be protected by a fully informed juror when people inevitably fall victim to malicious prosecutions. Let's make sure they are there when we need them. We look forward to your photos, your videos, your after event reports from all of your juror rights education outreach activities today. And as promised earlier, let's get to our item to give away. I'm going to be careful and try not to spill my coffee. We will be giving away this John Adams mug, not this, this John Adams mug, but one of these John Adams mugs. This is mine and I'm not sharing it. Um, to a commenter randomly drawn from anyone who comments today, Jury Rights Day, September 5th, 2013. And what, what the comment should be is to tell us why you are celebrating Jury Rights Day. So please leave your comment below. We'll select a random person from those comments and I will send you a message by YouTube to get your um, address where we can send you your lovely John Adams mug, which on the back has a John Adams quote. It is not only the juror's right, but his duty to find the verdict according to his own best understanding, judgment, and conscience, though in direct opposition to the direction of the court. So uh, please leave your comment below and uh, you may be the lucky owner of a brand new John Adams mug. Happy Jury Rights Day, and I look forward to hearing from you all very soon.